In this video, I'm going to go over the strategies I use to prove complex trigonometric identities. Now, if you're watching this video, you should definitely have an understanding of the Pythagorean identity, the quotient identity, and the reciprocal identities. I am going to use these throughout this video, so it's a good idea to make sure you're up to speed. I've done a video on each of these, and I'm super excited to put these into practice. Very quickly, I want to share a few tips that I use when approaching a trig identity problem. Always start by identifying and writing the most complicated side. It's kind of counterintuitive. Your brain is going to tell you to start with the simplest side, but trig identities don't really work that way. The second thing is to write everything in terms of sine and cos. Usually this involves using the quotient or the reciprocal identities, which will make your life much easier. Third thing I can suggest is look for double and compound angles. Usually when you find these in your trig identity problems, your expression gets much, much worse before it gets better. But that's kind of true for most identity problems anyways. Fourth thing I usually suggest is check for common factors. Most people find trig identities difficult because they struggle with common factoring without even realizing it. Another thing people really struggle with is finding a common denominator. Remember, if you want to add or subtract fractions, you have to find a common denominator. Most people know how to add 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, but when they're faced with 1 over sine plus 1 over cos, they shut down. Remember that this is the exact same skill and is necessary quite often in trig identity problems. The last thing I'm going to suggest is using tricks. Now I wrote it this way because tricks to me are really just intuitive leaps of logic. Often when I'm teaching trig identities, my students will say, how did you know how to do that? And the answer to that is very difficult to explain because mathematical intuition isn't something that you can really teach. It's something that you develop over time with lots of practice. All right, so I'm super excited to dive into this example. Now remember, if you look at the list of tips, the first thing is you want to start with the most complicated side. Usually if you have a fraction on one side and you don't have a fraction on the other side, the side with a fraction is most complex. So we'll start with the right side. Next, my list of tips says, write everything in terms of sine and cos. Looking at my right side, I have a reciprocal expression of cosecant on top. Remember, using the reciprocal identity cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, I can rewrite this expression as 1 over sine over 2 cos x. Using my understanding of fractions, I know that 1 over sine divided by 2 cos x is the same thing as taking 1 over sine x and multiplying by 1 over 2 cos x. Now because what I really have here is two fractions being multiplied, remember I can multiply straight across in the numerator and the denominator. When I do that I produce this expression here. Now this is the part where things get really exciting. In the denominator I have 2 sine x cos x, and if you know your double angle identities, you know that 2 sine x cos x is sine of 2x. And we're getting very close to proving that the left side is equal to the right side. Remember, on the left side, I had cosecant of 2x. On the right side, I have 1 over sine of 2x. So I managed to produce the double angle necessary to show that the left side is equal to the right side. The only thing missing is somehow writing this as cosecant. Now, if I cover up the 2 in the denominator, as well as the 2 on the left side, it should be pretty clear that my left side is equal to my right side. Remember, I can apply this reciprocal identity again, this time just in reverse. This identity also holds for cosecant of 2x. Therefore, I can conclude that my left side is equal to my right side. You can't see me right now, but I literally ended up standing up throughout that explanation. I got goosebumps and I just couldn't contain myself. I'm standing. Okay, I'll sit back down for another example. Remember that the first tip I provided you with was to start with the most complicated side. In this example, I'm leaning towards the left side because my keen mathematical intuition is telling me to look at the two compound angle formulas involved. So I'm going to start with the left hand side and I'm going to take cos of x plus y and cos of x minus y and replace them with this stuff. So you can see I've done that here. So I've used my compound angle identities on the left hand side and I've produced the product of two binomials. But what you really have here is a situation where you could use FOIL to expand and simplify this product of binomial, just like you would with x minus y times x plus y. So when we use FOIL, we have cos x cos y times cos x cos y, also known as cos squared x cos squared y. I've got cos x cos y times sine x sine y, which I'll write as sine x sine y cos x cos y. I've got negative sine x sine y times sine x sine y, which I'll write as negative sine x sine y cos x cos y. And then lastly, I've got negative sine x sine y times sine x sine y, also known as negative sine squared x sine squared y. Whew. Hopefully I didn't lose you in that. Remember, all I'm really doing is using FOIL here. I totally still draw these on my page, by the way. This is the part of the trig identity problem where you realize, wow, you really just made this much, much worse. 
This is also the part of the trig identity problem where you realize, holy smokes, those two terms cancel out. And when they do, this thing simplifies like a J. Strauss math video. So you take a minute to congratulate yourself on your keen observations. And when that moment passes, you realize, oh, I'm stuck. This is an inevitable part of solving a trig identity problem. Getting stuck, getting discouraged, feeling frustrated, and wanting to give up. Unless you're me, because at this point I'm just super excited because I know exactly where this is going and man, it is good. If you take a look at the right side, I have two terms involving cos and no terms involving sine. So using the observation that my left side has cos and sine, but my right side only has cos, I'm going to pick on these sine terms. Fortunately, both of them are squared. Using my understanding of the Pythagorean identity, I know I can take cos squared x over to the other side where I would have 1 minus cos squared x and I can call that sine squared x. If I do that with both sine squared x and sine squared y, I can replace each of them with 1 minus cos squared, x here, y here. And now for the second time you're realizing, wow, I just made this even worse. But that's okay, because remember, things are about to get good. You'll see that you have another foiling situation here. This results in an even worse expression than before. But after I distribute this negative into the brackets, all of my signs change. And this is the moment where all of your frustration and tears, and for me, the extreme sensation of joy builds up to the point where I find myself standing up yet again, all pays off. The two ugliest terms in your expression cancel out because they are identical with opposite signs. Seriously, how good does that feel? Now at this point, if you haven't realized it, we've actually proven that the left side is equal to the right side. However, the perfectionist in me wants to rewrite the left side exactly as the right side, just to prove how indisputably, without a doubt, the left side is equal to the right side. Now that was definitely a complex trig identity problem. There are more complex trig identity problems, but I want to keep this video brief and hopefully somewhat engaging. If you have any questions about what happened in either of these two examples, leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to respond with as much passion as I gave you in this video. And if you have any other trig identity problems that you'd like to see me do a video on, let me know. I like trig identities more than the average person. Maybe even more than the average math teacher. Hey.